Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. Oh my goodness. So we are, we meant to record this. We said last week, if you listened, that, yeah, that we were be, going to have this recorded. Pre-recorded. Before. Yeah. That it would be before we had our child. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not. It's not. We're, we're officially back to like in real time. Uh, kind of. Well, like within the week. Yeah. And we already had, well, actually, let's just go ahead and jump into it, I guess. We're going to start out by kind of throwing it back. We did some updates throughout my pregnancy, just kind of talking about how we were feeling, what we were learning while we were recording the podcast. So uh, if you're listening to audio, I don't know how this (laughs) will reflect or how it's going to be understood. Hopefully it makes sense. But if it doesn't make sense for you, you can definitely hop over to our YouTube and watch the video version of this in which it will make a lot more sense. We'll give you a timestamp if you get lost and you just want to get into the rest of the episode. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just after several of the episodes that we recorded through kind of the start of this podcast, uh, we did a little pregnancy update, just podcast specific, kind of how things were going and gave us a little format to riff. So let's jump into that. Yeah. 17 weeks. We're We're coming up on 18. Tomorrow's our, our 18. Getting a little less sick. A little. I actually had a whole conversation with Matt about how I was feeling better. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I needed to refill my medication. (laughs) And I... Was wrong. I was wrong. She uh, completely ejected last night's dinner. I did. I cracked the code of thawing Uncrustables. Uh, Quickly. So... There Cracking is not the a, code is just reading it and leaving it out 30 to 60 minutes. Well, yes, on the box, 30 to <laughs> 60 minutes. My wife, um, after she loses her dinner, she's like, I want an Uncrustable. You need to figure out a way to thaw it right away. Take your microwave to 20% power. Now that may vary, but I, I would say 20%. I don't know how to do that. 12 seconds on each side. And That's I held fact. it down. You did hold it down. You actually requested another one. Yeah, I ate two. 22 weeks, baby. 22 weeks. I feel like it really popped this week. In the, I'm still in that phase where when I wake up in the morning, I don't look pregnant. The baby disappears. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I... You get pregnant every day. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. It's really odd. 22 weeks. Uh, the weird part going on right now is a lot of our friends are, or like acquaintances or people we follow online have announced their pregnancies. Yeah. And are having babies even after us. Like, oh, most of them are. The, the thing is, most people, when they announce, it's 20 weeks or earlier. Right. You know. Most people announce between 14 and 15 weeks. I, uh, yeah, it's just crazy to see that other people are. Yeah, it is. Finding out they're having boys, girls. I think it's a boy. Yeah, I'm, we have flipped on this a little bit. I'm going on record. Okay. I, I. I will probably change my mind throughout the process, but I am more open to the idea of it being a boy because initially I was like, it's a girl. We have a girl. That's what makes sense. Obviously just our experience with the the ultrasound. uh, I'm like, yeah, it could be a boy. And she said at the beginning of it, since you guys aren't finding out, I'm going to treat this entire thing as if I see that it's a boy. Like before she, before the machine oh, was even on. Okay, she said that. I didn't mm-hmm. hear that because she has all boys. So she's gotcha. like, just so you know, that's how I'm going to. Okay. Well, that does a little bit shade kind of how she was acting then too. Right. But you're feeling better. I'm feeling for the better. Most part. I'm not so tired. I'm not so sick. Yeah. Uh, that's huge. We're just naturally tired and sick from other things. Yeah, and we're getting ready to take maternity pictures here in about a week. So we're getting to feel the baby. Yeah. That's fun. And happened a lot earlier this time. Yeah. Well, I think you're also just much more in tune. Like, that too. Anyway, yeah. We'll keep checking in. It's fun. That's the update. Pregnancy update. Pregnancy update. Update of pregnancy. She's pregnant. Wow. 24 weeks pregnant. We had our follow-up ultrasound. Yep. It's not a big bump. No. Well, again, we're broad folk. People just don't realize that. Yeah. On the internet, people think we're... Just, it's Little because we're proportionally gals. wide and tall. Yeah. We're, we're feeling kicks. Kids kicking. Like, yeah. You can feel kid kicking. I can see kid kicking. Yeah. 
and uh, we still don't know if we're having a boy or a girl. No. Nope. If you're, it's funny because if you're listening to this, you probably know, but we don't know. Yeah. Which is just a weird <laughs> thought process. Uh, I think we have that discovery every time we do this. I know. It's crazy. But it just is weird. Yeah. I'll keep thinking about it. How are you no leaning? Doubt. Do I? How are you leaning? Boy. Boy. Still on boy. Yep. Girl. You're leaning girl? I can't imagine not having a girl. We're getting better. I'm I'm getting more and more nervous about uh, pulling off not announcing online because <laughs> as we're as i'm getting bigger and as my clothes are no longer fitting and you're like getting more annoyed getting out of the car <laughs> yeah yeah like i'm losing my core strength at this point not mm -hmm. you know but just like i don't have the same mobility and uh so i'm starting to get antsy i'm like oh man we have 16 weeks that i have to keep pulling yeah. this off yeah it's a long time it's a really long time so hope we did it i know i hope this isn't really lame <laughs> Well, it's okay if it is. Yeah. It's not about that. Yeah. But. Just it's a fun project. Yeah. So. That's 24 weeks. 24. Here's the bump that we've been hiding. <gasps> you ready? Podcast 36 table. 36 weeks. Three. Six mafia. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kaboom. Kabang. Ka-chow. We're, we're four weeks out from due date. <laughs> yep. Uh, and we're making it. Not dilated. Not effaced. But the kid is head down. They're in position. Yeah. I had my first weekly appointment and yeah. I'm not dilated or anything. Exciting. No. We're back now. This yeah. is back to real time. Back to real time. Yeah. We, it was crazy. It was really interesting through the pregnancy because we knew we wanted to share later. And like we spoke about on last week's episode, mm -hmm. this whole experience was really kind of an experiment in being able to still create content, but not in real time in order to have that hindsight of looking back through content and just moments from our lives and mm -hmm. getting to really choose intentionally what we wanted to share versus what we want to keep to ourselves. And ironically, to not overshare yeah. our child, mainly concerning our child. Yeah. But like we didn't want to overshare yeah aspects of that and I, I think that is a really interesting part about us because the podcast is called oversharing yeah. mm -hmm. and i am here to overshare every gory detail you want about me yeah all day long you can have all the information i'll answer any question yeah just go ahead and ask questions yeah but uh when it comes to our littles we want them to have that choice as they get older of what feels right to them yeah and we don't know how the world's going to change and evolve and so it feels wrong to me personally just with my relationship with motherhood and what i want out of it to make that decision for them yeah so here we are and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about pregnancy yeah kind of a recaps and what what happened throughout and yeah our experience with it and well it's been really interesting because we've started sharing videos from <laughs> my pregnancy on tiktok instagram some pictures things like that and there are all kinds of questions and the number one thing that people have been asking me to share that I don't have is our reaction video to finding out we're pregnant yeah that one yeah so we didn't really do that well we found out we were pregnant amongst moving yes and I was so dead set that I wasn't pregnant I did not even think to film it yeah you were yeah because it it didn't even cross my mind like I I wanted to take the test because I'd been taking tests every mm -hmm. month but I it, it didn't even cross my mind to record and you were with me yeah yeah we were doing stuff we were the in time. the in-law suite Whenever mm -hmm. we were living over on my mom and dad's side, when we were waiting for the rest of the house to be finished, it was the last week in May. Yeah. And uh, I took it and I looked at Matt and I was like, oh, oh. And then the next day I said, you, I said, I didn't record any of that. No. And again, you were, you had so much disbelief and I think you didn't want to get your hopes up. And so it, like, it was very measured. So you just kind of were like, well, we're going to keep taking these. We're going to wait and see, make sure that this isn't uh, a chemical pregnancy or anything in that realm. You're like, I just want to know. And so it was very much a slow 
drip. And I haven't spoken about that a ton, but prior to our pregnancy this time, we had a chemical pregnancy the cycle before. Yeah. And I was so excited. And we do have video of yeah, you and that's telling me thing. that. I have the video of all the little setup I did for that to tell yeah. Matt and all of that. And it was like, I was so excited. And then within the week, I was so like yeah, devastated. The lines kept getting less less defined and then they weren't really showing up at all. Yeah. And so it just, uh, I think it kind of put a damper on the next time. Right. I, I, I went into it really cautious because I don't even know that it helps. <laughs> That's the thing is I don't know that being cautious makes it any better. But amongst all the other things we had going on with moving and, you know, G was about to turn one. We yeah. were about to leave for a trip to Arizona. Uh, we just had a ton going on. Yeah. And I mean, family health and all this stuff was kind of up in the air. And so it was really chaotic. And the house, again, was just kind of dragging on. And we were we were going through that process, which we've talked about a bunch of times. But yeah, yeah, we do have... It's funny. We I found the basket from the first announcement like a, a month or two ago in the the second garage and it had lots of cute stuff for G uh, becoming a big sister. So that was cool. But it was also kind of a reminder like, Oh yeah, I forgot. Like we never really even took time to process that. And right. it was, uh, and that's one of the things we, it, a lot of people experience loss and it's, uh, something we want to normalize, but we're not experts on it by any means. Cause we, again, we were too busy to even process it. And by the time we were getting into a point, we could process it. Starting... We were pregnant again. Yeah. It was, a wild time. I mean, it was an eight week span of up and down and around and yeah. <laughs> a lot of feelings. And like I said, we just had a lot happening. Uh, we hosted my family for the first time in June Yep. Uh, for what we do our, a yearly holiday J is what we call it uh, with my family. And it's to make sure we all get together and we had that going on and my birthday and my mom's birthday and G's, G's birthday, birthday and <laughs> everybody's birthday we're moving we're trying to get the house in a state that people can stay with us that was a huge a huge undertaking like we had we had, we didn't have all our bathrooms done nope we had like two had functioning one bathrooms bathroom. one yeah because yeah. ours, ours didn't, didn't have, have flooring yeah, yeah we had no flooring in our bathroom and the only complete bathroom was your parents bathroom uh-huh yeah so anyway I don't have a video of us finding out. No. And it was also during a time, one of my very best friends, uh, her daughter was having a transplant. Yeah. Uh, around, right around the time that we found out. And, and so it just wasn't the focus. No, no, we were, we were just busy. We were really busy and we were trying to, I think keep our emotions leveled out. I I think like we didn't want to get built up too much. We didn't want to get too invested and risk our more of our mental well-being which wasn't real great to begin with well and again i go back to i don't know that it would have helped no doing it the other way but it was our only sense of control at that time yeah it just yeah somehow and this has happened with both pregnancies our pregnancy has become like not the most important thing in our life yeah <laughs> like for a lot of people that is and it is a huge deal it's very important it's not that it's yeah. not important it's just we have had more immediate problems like pregnancy is just kind of this passive in the background experience almost to like the day to day. A lot of health. We'll, we'll get into it, I yeah. guess, as we get deeper yeah, into yeah. The pregnancy, because then we can actually like give you context. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first 12 weeks uh-huh. was sick through summer. First half sick. Yeah. Uh, my pregnancy was really similar to that of G if you kept up with us, uh, as we documented everything with that pregnancy online, I was incredibly sick. And I think that that was a huge contributing factor to us being able to keep things as private as we did, Mm -hmm. uh, because I was able to wear jeans because I lost 15 pounds right off the bat. As your bump was growing you were losing a lot of weight wasting away yeah (laughs) people are like what are you doing exercise wise and you're like i'm really sick i think i spoke on that last week actually one of the funniest parts of the entire thing is when we hit around that 20 week mark 
the number of DMs I got from people asking what I was doing Mm -hmm. for fitness and health. And I really looked like I was losing weight. Well, you can look back on that time and you've got a a sharp (laughs) jawline. Yeah. You might be 16 weeks pregnant, but your, your jaw's looking crisp. And it was the same way the first go around. So I was really sick. I was, I, I, the exhaustion was next level. Yeah. Uh, but we were also just really enjoying the time with G and like trying to explain to her that she was going to be a big sister. Still not sure she grasped it. No. I mean, we've had this last week with her and, uh, she's still not totally getting it. She really likes the baby. She really likes the baby. Mm Mm-hmm. But there are definitely times where she's like, okay, we've, we've uh, paid attention to the baby. Look how nice I was to the baby. Look at me. Mm-hmm. I'm awesome. It's fun. And she is awesome. Yeah. And especially at that one year time, like she just was so fun. And she yeah. was learning new things. She was learning to walk. She was learning words, just tons of developmental steps that were a blast. Yeah. It, it's been... I don't know. Crazy. And then, so then we entered into second trimester Mm -hmm. and second trimester was through kind of late summer through fall. Yeah. And uh, that's when we finally got to move into the house. Yes. that The rest of the house, because it wasn't until June, I guess your family came to stay that we had enough of the rest of the house done that we could live over here. Yep. And that there weren't people in and out all the time. Just sometimes. Yeah. And the end of July, we had tile in our bathrooms. And so we finally got to start moving all of our furniture in in August and really started getting to live in the house. And that's when we started intentionally thinking about what is life going to look like now? Yeah. And that requires a level of forward thinking that I don't like actually have. My brain doesn't compute that way so that's always a struggle for me but we've we've been learning along along the way for sure and I I don't know uh, if we're doing a good job or not but we're gonna find out yeah uh and then I'm like just trying to kind of go through the order of events because October hit and I think October was maybe the hardest month I've ever had yeah. I think I'm willing to say that. I, I think that October was the hardest month I've encountered as an adult. Just mentally? Or in every way. Every capacity. Um my mom had some real health scares and she was hospitalized um for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of dropped everything and we're back home in Springfield and it was uh, overwhelming. I mean, very overwhelming. And uh, I was trying my best to focus on just the necessities of we had launched the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah. So we were trying to get episodes of the podcast <sighs> recorded and out. Yeah. Which we really enjoy this. Mm-hmm. A no, the ton. podcast has been great. And I'm actually really excited moving forward into this new season where you guys are aware of everything going on in our lives because I think it's going to give us a lot more freedom to speak. Uh, not that I necessarily felt no, it's censored. Just, it's just always in the back of your mind that you're like filtering that aspect out. Right. You can't be like, oh, I've been sick again this week. I've been sick again this week. I'm not feeling great. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm feeling good again. We honestly probably saved you from hearing about how sick I'm. (laughs) Yeah, that might have just gotten redundant. (laughs) Somebody commented on a a TikTok and said, oh, this is why Joe was yawning so much on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had a lot of yawns, a lot of like staring off just, oh, yeah, Mm mm-hmm. I was trying so hard. Yeah. Uh, and so... The odds this time are from having a newborn. Yeah. Your endorphins officially wore off last night. She's been crushed. So we've, we've been home a week from the hospital today. Or no, you gave birth yeah. a week ago today. We got home. Anyway, doesn't matter. Like the first night, 
again, as the dad, you don't get the same endorphin rush, so you get you get an adrenaline dump, and then you just brrr, fall asleep. At least Matt does. Then uh, me anyway. And then the first night or two, I was a wreck, like just really grouchy. And you were you you've been like, hey, um, I appreciate you trying to be awake, but you're kind of a dick <laughs> when you're not when you're this tired. You're trying. I can see you trying. You're you, not doing it on purpose. No, you were trying so hard. But I would rather you go to sleep and when you're awake, be a be better nice. person. Yeah. <laughs> then you try to be a better person, but not achieve it and be awake. Like, I, I can't do both and I don't <laughs> want the asshole. Yeah. You really struggled on that. Yeah. But we we made it out. Mm -hmm. you so had... you you supported me the first several nights where you're you're on those endorphins and you're well, you're sent you're ready yeah. ready to rock and you're you're somehow making it without much sleep. I mean less sleep than I'm getting and I'm last night I tapped yeah. out. Last night was the night where the endorphins wore off and she's like, <laughs> mm. we have to feed the kid before bed and she's like, can I'm... you? Uh, no, you can't do this. How do I? Mm. Can you place this child on my chest? Yeah, can you? Can, can you, you hold him here? Him? Yeah. <laughs> can you get the milk out and then just put it in him, or what's? <laughs> you're just you're about to tip over. So if I look really tired, you know you why. Are. Yeah, we both but, are. But you anyway. officially hit your wall. So this is the part where I'm going to have to pick it back up. Right. I've, I've been getting these four or five days of sleep so yeah, that you've I can it. fire it back up. Yeah, you've got it. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, okay, I'm going back to October. Because that's where I was. This is exactly how we've been sharing content online. Is like, current, 25 weeks ago, six weeks ago, 15 weeks ago. I know. And we apologize. That's not great for a podcast, but here you are. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so we got back home after everything that had happened with my mom. And we were really focused on supporting my mom and my dad and um, through that. And then Halloween came around. <laughs> And we were all excited because mm -hmm. we were going to go to a Halloween party. We hadn't been going out much. I was finally starting to feel better. She's able to walk. Yeah. I'm hitting that like 23, 24 week mark. I'm not getting sick every day anymore. Yeah. Uh, like we're, we're coming out. You're not we're, too big. Yeah. You're physically comfortable. Yep. We're like, we're doing things. Yeah. And uh, we get a call from Matt's family that they were they were planning on coming a and I think we talked about this event. on the podcast. Do I? I think we talked about this on the podcast back in okay. October. Was like, oh yeah, we're not gonna be able to watch G this weekend. We're in the ER. Your dad's about to get a pacemaker put in in the next two hours. Yeah, and it's like, so oh okay. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about the babysitting part. Just. Let us know how dad yeah. turns out and if we need to come up and like help you help guys. Help you guys out. So yeah, don't worry about our Halloween party. Yeah. That's just who and my mom is And we actually got though. to go to the Halloween party. We really so. did. Yeah. But it, it was, I think we were a little over overwhelmed. Yeah. We just took the Halloween party to be like, whoa, what, yeah. what is happening in our lives? Yeah. Double checking that everything's good and he's, he's doing better at the moment. So yeah. And everything went great. Yeah. Thankfully. And then it was uh, into hosting the holiday. Yeah. And then it was Joe learns to host while and, learning to be extra pregnant. Well, and I think that was actually the easiest time for me with posting content of the entire pregnancy. Well, you had a framework. You had a distraction. Oh, and I, I had one. so much fun with it. And when that you have that pressure of the content, then you also have uh, some structure and some external motivation to get some of the projects we've been doing done and you're like i'll just film it and then we can both get content and get our house better and i had a blast with that because yeah. i got so many incredible recommendations from people who were following me i had all kinds of uh just help and guidance and conversation and i don't know i yeah. i loved the way that went and it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be to hide my bum for those videos. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, I would film an activity that took 25 minutes and I'd film the entire thing. And then I only needed six seconds. So, yeah. And so in a 25 minute video, you can easily find six seconds where you don't look pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the most part. As long as you're wearing, you know, giant clothing, huge sweatshirts, which 
you know, we have an abundance of huge sweatshirts in this house. Yeah. I just went into oversized mode with clothing. Again, two X's. N- nobody in this house wears a two X normally, but well, we own XL several was now. Fitted over my bump. So. Mm-hmm. An XL, which is what I wear, started to get a little snug. Yeah. Yeah. Made it through the holidays, and then all of a sudden we were thirty something weeks pregnant, and it was like, wow. Okay, we are. We're in it. Yeah. And, and you got a lot more physically uncomfortable. Yeah. So I was going to kind of note that for everybody. I think there have been a lot of questions surrounding what this pregnancy was like for me versus G. And I think overall they were very similar. Yeah. In terms of timing, timing of everything, um, my symptoms and kind of reactions to the pregnancy mm-hmm. were very similar. The one thing that was really different that Matt's noting is I started to get uncomfortable a lot earlier. Uh, I had a lot more pressure like in my pelvis that caused a lot of pain in my hips and things that I just didn't have whenever I had G. And uh, uh, according to my doctor, (laughs) that's just kind of normal with subsequent pregnancies. But that was limiting your physical mobility. For sure. You weren't able to keep up with G as much or stay on top of the physical activities that you may have been able to do the first time. Right. Because I know at 30 something weeks, the first time you were like, physically, I feel good. Yeah. I get tired a little sooner, but I'm kind of like amped up. I'm not sick and I'm not tired. So I got to make hay while the sun shines. Well, and I also kind of hit this point where, you know, our our job is content creation. And I think Matt and I really have enjoyed this podcast side of things and we're trying to figure out where we want to take it and what we want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I was physically uncomfortable. (laughs) I was so tired and I was so hard on myself. You are during that because I was like the people who follow us and like listen to this podcast have to be so frustrated because they expect more out of us. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that that is the hard part of just not not operating at your full capacity and knowing that you have more in the tank that you can't yeah, reach I, right I now. I think that was the hardest part for me. But but all in all, the pregnancy was very similar to that of mm-hmm. G. Uh, I carried high. Again, not as high as I did with G. No. But high. No, we got a little lower, and that's where some more of your pressure and your pelvic pain came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I feel like the buzz topic, <laughs> stretch marks. Yeah. I feel like that's the buzz topic for me online, uh, which is funny because I don't really, I don't know that I think about them that much. You really don't. It's not something that occupies a lot of space in your brain. But I bring it up because it was noted to me so much in um, a story that I put up this week and that showed all my stretch marks. And I did. I did, in fact, get a lot more stretch marks around what Probably they started like the 34 week mark this time. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a lot different because with G, I got most of my stretch marks at 40 weeks and then postpartum. Because mm-hmm. at 38 weeks, you really, you were like, wow, I don't have much in the stretch mark territory. And then but all of a I sudden, knew, right around due date, like, I was so prepared for them because my mom has them. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, they have to be coming. Uh, and I didn't know how I was going to handle that whenever I was pregnant with G. Yeah. That was a concern. You were very I, I was, in your head. Like, I know they're normal. I know they'll fade. It's I, I, I've seen my moms. I like them. They don't bother her. They don't bother me. Am I going to mentally be able to get there, though? Well, you just hear so many women talk about their body changing and struggling with their relationship with their body. And mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time thinking about that. And I actually ended up really loving mine. Yeah. But I, I have to say leading into that part where the stretch marks started showing up again and more abundantly this pregnancy, I got that same nervous feeling and I talked to you about it. That's something I think that's been really interesting seeing you go through pregnancy a second time is how much the anticipation of things has affected your experience. Because the first time around, I feel like you didn't know what to expect. And now that you've known what to expect, there's a totally different anxiety. We had that in birth like, what What are some of the things that you experienced more anxiety-wise round two? Nursing. And we're going to do a episode. Our, we won't 
be talking about baby forever on the podcast, guys. We promise this isn't we will just a baby go podcast. back to regularly programmed, scheduled everything. Yeah. But uh, we're going to spread it out over a couple of episodes to kind of keep our thoughts with our, our newborn. Well, and I time. think to give it the, this is really, I think, widely applicable stuff or yeah, stuff that people too. are interested in. So we want to talk about it in the depth that a lot of people have asked us to talk about it. They're like, can you really go into detail on these certain things? What's your experience with this side of whatever? And so rather than try and crunch it all into 40 minutes of talking, we're kind of trying to give it the space it needs to. I agree. So next week, we're going to go in depth on our birth story and what the first few weeks at home have been like. So Mm -hmm. we'll get more into that. But to briefly highlight what you're saying, I would say I was most nervous about breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to nurse with G and uh, had a really hard time and I'll get into detail on that. And so I was really anxious. I gave birth unmedicated with G and I really psyched myself out uh, going into the second birth. Uh, just, I don't know. I had a lot of anxiety this time that I didn't have. And I think part of that too is in the last few years, we've had a lot of close friends who have had really tough things they've gone through and have lost little ones. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that was living in the back of my head pretty heavily. Yeah. I don't know. Although we've seen a lot more of what can go wrong. Yeah. And the more you know on that side of things and the closer it gets to you in reality, the more space it occupies in your head and the the less you can just go, I think it'll turn out good. Yeah. Because you've seen the other side of it and it's not anything that they did. It's just luck of the draw. And it impacted me majorly. And I'm going to get into that next week. Um, And I'm excited to talk to you guys about that. But hopefully we've had more sleep and a little more clarity around our postpartum experiences. Exactly. It's been a a tumultuous week, just emotionally and physically. And well, and I think that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. No, I think that's very normal. But we want to get a little perspective on it rather than be like in it, in it and just go. Oh, no. <laughs> I overall feel like our experience has been pretty positive. It's been but really good, and he's been really good. Yeah, but this there's last, still a mental hurdle. For sure. And I, I think that these last... Uh, the, the last note that I'll make about kind of the pregnancy journey before we hop into Greg's Reads of the Week and all of our yeah. fun stuff, I feel like the last four weeks of this pregnancy were the hardest for me. And I think that generally speaking, the hardest parts of this pregnancy for me were mental. Uh, and that's been the last couple years for me. I, I have gone through a lot of moments in the last few months where I have wondered if getting into the world of content creation and all of that was right for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it does come with an array of privileges and it comes with an array of problems that are all very different than what you expect once you're actually experiencing them. Yeah. And uh, I think I really experienced that in this last month of pregnancy and the anxiety and the worrying about after keeping all of this private, how do we, go about sharing it Mm -hmm. in a way that's authentic and yeah gives uh, is is fun and entertaining for people and gives people some insight on uh, one of the lessons i think you really wanted to teach is the internet you can show anything you want on the internet and you can make yourself look however you want so take the internet with a grain of salt and i think i learned that even more so with this because People are not always trying to deceive you. Yeah. I I think that that's kind of what I learned through this is we did not share out of wanting to deceive people. We're going to trick a million people on the internet. It was completely self-focused. We did it for ourselves and for our mental health. And it wasn't really with any priority to those that followed us again a lot of people that present a certain way online are trying to protect 
themselves, themselves, protect a little piece of their identity and go, hey, this is for me and this is for my family and my friends and the people that really, really know me. And this person that's online, this is who the world expects, but it means I'm not that person and I can be me deep and, down. And I think that we expect, or at least I do, or I have in the past as a follower online of people, I expect this transparency out of them so that they can fill out the gaps that I need to know. Mm -hmm. And this experience really <laughs> opened my eyes because I, I, I don't know why my brain would ever think that they're doing that to try and keep me from something. Yeah. And we work to be very transparent, like personality wise and who we are as people and what we value. But even so, there's tons of things in our lives that just are never going to come through the screen. Right. Or that we don't want to come through the screen. Yeah. Things we're working on, things that we are unhappy with. And like, there's just some things aren't worth sharing and some things just don't matter. I think one of the highlights of the pregnancy that I thought was really fun was our trip to LA. That was a great trip. That was so, so much fun. And I, I'm sure we talked glowingly about it. When it happened. Back in November when it happened. But um, it gave us just a really little sense of community. Yeah. With we got that... to be around people who just were so wonderful yeah. and it was fun to get to share our pregnancy with them yeah and uh, you know we we just had a blast out there we love those and, guys yeah we do and a lot this has been the other question that i've gotten a ton and i really want to answer and i'm hoping that i can do it in a way that makes sense yeah what did you do if you ran into fans out in public and they saw that you were pregnant oh yeah <sighs> i think you're way overestimating how important we are <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> the, I, the number of times we were approached in person is very low and i don't think anybody cared that i was or wasn't pregnant and a lot of it was it, i would say like 36 weeks on where you were really really showing we didn't go you didn't go in, again, you didn't feel good. Physically, you were like, I don't want to walk around Target because my pelvis feels like it's falling out of my body. But at 37 weeks pregnant, we did go we to did Target. We did run into, and we took pictures with people. And we took a picture with a girl that followed us online. Shouts to you, whoever uh, yeah. you were. That, that was great. And I, she didn't mention it. You were wearing your glitter Uggs, which was a good <laughs> sign you did not intend to come into the store. Yeah. You were fortunately wearing a really big cardigan. But the big thing about you is also the way you carry and when you were wearing all these oversized clothes, even if somebody knew you were pregnant, I it, think a lot of the suspicion would have been like, ooh, she's probably 22 weeks pregnant. Maybe they're going to announce real soon. It's people like Rihanna at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, did you see people online to the death defending <laughs> her being like, absolutely not. We're not going to assume she's pregnant. This and that. Uh, my guess is if anybody noticed, they weren't willing to say anything. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I, at the root of it, I just don't, we're not that important. We are not a huge celebrity. No. We are not, be, people don't care. Like it, it's not uh, worth spilling the secret because it's not that big of a no. deal, I guess. I don't think a lot of people could go and like talk to a bunch of other people and be. Right. I don't know like, where you, you wouldn't would. believe this. They're going to be like, I, okay. I mm -hmm. guess you could have commented on one of my I, like I don't even yeah. know where you would have shared that information. Yeah. To where people would, you know. And you're doing a good job, so people probably wouldn't have believed him. No, yeah. So I did have one girl the entire pregnancy, yep. one person DM me and say it was very kind. She said it in a very kind way. Um, but pretty much your lips are really swollen like they were when you were pregnant with G. Are you pregnant again? Your lips look really good. Yeah. And that was the one person that had some kind of And I screenshotted it and it. I DM'd her after we announced. Yep. And I was like, you were the one person that, uh, did. <laughs> and I'm sure lots of people suspected. I'm not questioning. No. Like, or saying that nobody suspected and this and that. And what I'm, I kept telling you though, is a lot of people that suspect are going to suspect that you're 22 weeks, right. 24 weeks. You, they're and not going to suspect you're 38 weeks pregnant and doing this stuff. That is part that of benefit of how I carry. Yeah. So Just that's being a the big thing. girl. I'm tall and I don't carry super far out. And 
Yeah. Okay. Let's let's go on to reads of the week. Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. Uh, Greg's um, reads of the week. My father-in-law, your dad. Yes. And like many parents of his generation, loves to send his kids articles, news, yes. things and that they should know. We like to read the headlines and then rate them on a scale of one to five, how much anxiety they gave us. Yes. Because when your parents send you articles, sometimes you go, oh, I'll read that. And sometimes you go, I would rather die than read that. I got to go ahead and put an apology out there to Gregory, though, because mm-hmm. I have not read a single one of these. Perfect. I'm not even sure which ones you picked. All of these, for the most part, I believe, are from this week. Okay. So we've been a little preoccupied. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in. Article number one. New cars are crazy expensive, and it's our own fault. CNN Business. Uh, that's a one out of five for me, because uh, I haven't even shopped for new cars. No. We're an old cars family. We are. <laughs> we We're are. Like, they get us from A to B. Still runs good. Both looks of our cars fine are almost outside. 10 years old. Yeah. Yeah, we're more in the five to 10 years old car range. 100,000 miles. Oh, that's that's ever, the sweet spot. That's have, where we start. Oh, your your car that you just sold whenever you bought it was less than. Yeah. I've never bought a car with less than 100,000 miles I, on it. I did buy a pretty sweet car that was like seven years old with like 76,000 miles on it. So somebody wasn't driving it a lot. Yeah. But it was it was older. I have not owned a car with less than 100,000 miles. Yeah, why would you? That's going to be crazy <laughs> if I ever do that. One day you're going to get a new or newer car. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, this is wild. These seats are hard. (laughs) (laughs) This leather isn't, you know. It's all in one piece. That's weird. (laughs) So clean. Uh, No, it didn't give me anxiety. And honestly, dad has talked about this so much. We hear about it a lot. We've been with him that I just assumed. He's a car guy. He likes cars. He keeps his finger on the pulse of the car car world. He does. We are like, we can't afford them and don't want them. So (laughs) cool. Great. Not, Not really affecting us much. All right. Article number two, the number one money habit of early retirees says CFP, CNBC. Says I don't CFP. know what CFP is. Consumer. I don't know. CFP. Haven't read it. Um, I, that's another one to two range for me, anxiety wise. I just, uh, I'm not going to retire. the article and the article soon. is starting with the fire movement. Oh, okay. What's the FIRE movement? The FIRE movement is financial independence, retire early. Ah, uh, okay. Is what it stands for. But mm. what it's all about is really aggressive saving and really um, tight living in order to create a nest egg and retire early off sure. that nest egg. Okay. Is a, a very brief Yeah, no, no, no. Brief I'm familiar rundown. with what you're talking about there. So. It's I'm just sh- hyper-focused saving to retire like early, hyper early. focus yeah. saving. Yeah. You're like, we're going to grind for 10, 15 years. Right. So that we can retire. We're going to and- live on $500 a month so that we can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which nobody's doing that. I don't no, think that that's, that's even possible right now. <laughs> no. But, okay. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested to go back and read that one. Sure. It, it does not give me any anxiety. I don't think we're making those, those choices, but yeah. No. <laughs> nope. No anxiety on that one. One no. out of five. Maybe I'm just having a low anxiety week. Well, we've got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. All right. Can't sleep. Experts say this breath trick can make you drop off fast. Huff post. That's a, a negative one out of five for me. I usually don't have a problem sleeping. And this week, uh, I could fall asleep at this table. Yeah. I. This didn't give me anxiety, but I would like to go back and read it because I do have trouble falling you asleep. You have much more of an issue going to sleep. So I'd like to learn about the trick. Do some breath tricks. Yeah. All right, last one. Uh, The race to an RSV vaccine could soon be over decades after the first attempt. Again, no anxiety around that. No, that one actually made me excited. I feel like dad really has had a overly positive week of Mm -hmm. articles. Yeah. Don't you? Maybe that's intentional. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's trying to... It is to the family group. It's to everybody. But maybe he's trying to support us through our... uh, Mm -hmm. Give us some positive things like cars are expensive. Two ship. Yeah. If we're thinking about adding kids and getting a bigger car, that we're going to have to just fork over a wheelbarrow of cash. Yeah. <laughs> you guys. So I had never researched into like larger SUVs. When oh, was Lord. this? Oh, a couple months ago. And I started looking. Granted, we don't need one right now. No. But just four of us. We, uh, <laughs> I was just looking. 
Because I was like, well, maybe I'll want a bigger car as, you know, kids start thinking about sports or activities Mm -hmm. or, you know, things like that. And I just want to have an idea of what they go for. Holy cannoli. (laughs) No wonder people think the people driving big SUVs are the fancy people. Because they are are the fancy people. I, my, wow. Mm Mm-hmm. You can't get them below like eighty thousand dollars. Not new. Wild. Anyway, that really my brain exploded over that a couple months yeah. ago. I may have even talked about it on the podcast because it really it irked me. Anyway, I feel like a, the value of all the cars we have together has never been eighty thousand dollars. Absolutely, <laughs> I don't even know that it's twenty five thousand. Like at the peak of when we got them. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We take but, the peak of like every vehicle we've had. When we owned them, I don't think it totaled eighty thousand dollars. No way. Um, no, like not even half. No way. Yeah, yeah, probably. Anyway, not. <laughs> this is not important. It doesn't matter. Just that really blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, do you have a word of the week for me? Word of the week: facetious. Do you I know, know this word? word? Okay. Facetious. Yeah. What's it mean? Um. <laughs> I know that it like somebody's being facetious. Uh-huh. And what uh, are they doing if they're being facetious? It's not sarcastic, oh. but like kind of uh like I don't know. Sarcastic is a is a good It is? Yeah. I feel like it's a little different than sarcastic though, right? Yeah, it's kind of a little more I think overplayed. Yeah. Yeah. Should we should we look up a, a strict definition of it for you? Yeah. Look at that. You had one. This is the first time I've ever job. had one. It's a good job. I know I've used it sometimes, so I wanted to double check you actually knew. Treating serious issues with deliberately inappropriate humor. Flippant. Okay. Flippant makes more sense yeah. to me for yeah. what... Kind of over know? the top. Yes. Okay. Because I... I I have heard people say, like, I, I was being facetious yes. before. Yes. Yeah. And I like to use context. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I like to use the word hyperbole as well. And that was one I know you are less familiar with. I, uh, again, I remember it mm-hmm. from IB English. <laughs> sure. Like, do you know what I mean? We talked about hyperbole and we studied hyperbole and all that stuff. But I don't know that it ever really sunk in. Yeah. You weren't a big English gal. No. Hence this segment. Yeah. Word of the week where we try and teach Joe a new I'm word. I'm realizing now that... This segment just made made me look <laughs> made me look really dumb every time. We can pick a segment that makes me look dumb. No, emotional I don't intelligence. Mind. I don't know. What do you? No, <laughs> I don't <laughs> mind at all. I just am laughing because hyperbole. I I do know what hyperbole is. Sure, but it was just funny. Yeah, it's kind of like what's the math thing uh, that we always talk about that we all know. Uh, the quadratic formula. No, I was thinking of. Uh, Oh, shoot. I don't have it. It's okay. But we all know it. Yeah, maybe we don't. <laughs> we all know the, the what is the powerhouse of the cell? Mitochondria? <laughs> Mitochondria. I quizzed you on that the other day. <gasps> you did not do great. Guys, I was not a good student. No. I just was not. I I hate that for me. That's okay. I really do. We okay. hope they get your work ethic and, I guess, my ability to remember random facts. I have work ethic. It just goes to show you yeah, that sometimes all you need is work ethic. Mm-hmm. You don't need to do the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah, you just you Not just if you're need doing wedding photography. and work ethic. Yeah. Uh, okay. Congratulations on baby number two. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that is so exciting. I literally checked my phone at like 4 a.m. to find out who won the Super Bowl and saw the announcement and could not go back to sleep. I woke my husband up and he was like, I literally have no clue who these people are, but okay, no. that's that's great. Um, I do just have one question. How many times or like was it often at all that you wanted to announce prior to baby being born? I so badly want to keep my next pregnancy a secret, but we have a lot of local family and friends that I think would probably post and spoil it for us. 
Um, so how, you know, how, and I also don't know if I would even really be able to do it. Like, I'm just really excited about all things pregnancy. I'm a doula myself. Um, but just thought it would be such a fun secret to keep. Um, so I'm wondering, yeah, just wondering, you know, how often you guys wanted to share the news, um, and what led up to your decisions to not share the news if you're comfortable with that. Have a great day. I'm so, so excited. Hopefully you guys are getting all the baby snuggles. Love you both. Bye. That's a great question. It is. I don't think there was a single time. No, you were pretty determined. Like, yeah. again, I kept giving you that that out of like, if you want to share later, we definitely can. Like, it will be totally fine. People it was will be excited. so nice for me to not share. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it because... It meant that there wasn't a whole year of my content dedicated to just pregnancy and children. Yeah. Uh, because I really want to be more than that on the internet. I think that that's a really important part of my identity. And I'm happy to talk about my experience with motherhood. And I love connecting with other moms and other women and having conversations that we wouldn't otherwise be having. And that first six plus months of the baby, they're kind of an extension of mom anyway. Right. Like, and you're so, always with them, especially if they're breastfeeding. Like, and I, they are an extension of your being. They don't have a ton of agency or even mobility. Right. And so I knew that because of all of that, that my content for a while is going to be about... Motherhood. Yeah. Being a mom to two. And, and so for me, it was easy because it gave me... I don't know about easy being the right word, but... I never really felt this desire to get online and share because the important people in our lives knew. Yeah, yeah. Our friends That's true. knew, our family knew, and uh, I really wasn't worried about anybody. No. I'm sure people told people. Yeah. I don't know. I I think that as long as people know that you don't want people to know, mm-hmm. nobody's going to say anything to you. Yeah. And that's nobody, where you like, have to put know anything your, online. Yeah, the, that's where you have to know the circle of people you trust and that won't, like, intentionally. Yeah, a group of my girlfriends did a very small little brunch shower for me <laughs> just with a handful of friends. And I had to remind everybody before the shower that uh, we can't put anything on stories or online because yeah. people don't know. And, like, four of them were like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Never mind. I can't say that I'm in a baby shower today. I also will say that I think that that was easier for me, too. Like, if if you're sitting here wondering, how could I do this? I really want to note, one, I don't carry super far out. And I think that's been a huge privilege. Winter. Winter was a huge add to being able to do this. And the third thing is a lot of our close friends are not active online. No. Like no. we have, we have a handful of friends who are active online for sure. Uh, in like, in our hometown where we live and mm-hmm. operate, we have lots of friends who are content yes. creators. Yeah, absolutely. But I wasn't worried about them posting about it because they don't. They hardly share their lives mm-hmm. online, let alone, you know, remembering to post yeah. about mine. <laughs> so I I think that those were all things that were really working for us in the situation. I really thought that I would want to kind of like with us not finding out if we were having a boy or a girl. Yeah. There were lots of times where I was like, Oh, I really want to know. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was going to have more of that tug with announcing. Yeah. And I just never did. No, no. Once you were decided, I think it was decided. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly how we've approached finding out the sex of our baby is if we're not going to find out, we're not going to find out. And you just kind of shut that door in your brain and move on. Yep. I agree. All right, voicemail number two. Hey, y'all. I just want to say congratulations on the new baby. Also, how did you decide who you were going to tell? Like, was it just family? Or, like, was there a few friends? And, like, who did you decide? Oh, we'll tell them, but we won't tell them. I had no strategy. I think the biggest thing was um, friends that we saw frequently in person. We were like, hey, we're pregnant. Yeah. So just heads up. We're not we're not announcing it online, but we wanted them, them to know. And there are people that we would usually see that we didn't get to see in person that we had to like tell them last minute or like right after the baby was born and be like, 
hey, um, yeah, so don't be too shocked, but we're about to have a kid, and we wanted to tell you in person, and we've been trying to tell everybody in person, but we didn't make that happen. We've both been too busy. Well, like you said, if you've been listening to this episode, you've heard this year had a lot of up and downs with moving and just medical emergencies. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, there were a lot of things that we did not have the kind of social time that we typically have. And, and having a, a one-year-old. Yeah. And we had a one-year-old. And so we just didn't have a lot of the social time. And the biggest thing was we didn't call to tell people. We didn't text to tell people. We told people in person. Mm-hmm. So if I only saw you, like if I only saw friends, I can think of a few friends that I only saw in public settings around groups that I never got to tell Yeah, because it didn't feel like the appropriate place to say something. And then uh, I did have a couple friends. We, we have a very good couple friend of ours that we love dearly that we've been trying to get with the last six months or so. Mm-hmm. And our schedules just haven't lined up. And after delivery, I looked at Matt and I told him, I was like, they don't know. Like we, we need to text them because they don't know. And, uh, and we did, you know, and they were so wonderful and happy for us. We were like, hey, it's not because we don't love you guys. It's because we have not gotten our social calendar in order. Exactly. And we've been really working to not do this over the phone. Right. And and so I I don't know that there was a formal, this is who we're telling, this is Mm -hmm. who we're not kind of thing. But I think that was a good like delineation of do we see these people in real life yeah. or would we, if we were closer or that kind of capacity. And those are the people that we consider closer friends or people that would be more interested in knowing. Cause yeah. there's some people that would be friends that are like, cool, great, but it's not going to affect their day to day. I, yeah. And I did FaceTime a few friends that live far off that Absolutely. I knew I wasn't going to see in these last couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually have a video of my friend Claire who creates content on TikTok as well. Her and I met for brunch in person when I was 36 weeks pregnant yeah. and I wore a sweatsuit that you really couldn't. I was sitting down whenever she got mm-hmm. to the table. You couldn't really tell I was pregnant. We got up and left together and because of what I was wearing, unless you were looking for it. And so I well, told her. And she her, doesn't know you like well either. So maybe you're just physically built differently than right. she expected. I told her at 36 weeks in a parking lot of mm-hmm. a, a brunch joint in our town and she freaked out. You can just watch her brain reboot. Yeah. Like, what did you say? Wait, I've been with you for two hours. Wait, how, how, what, how? Yeah. And so it, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I think that we just went with our gut on it. Mm-hmm. And also... For us, we, I, I, a lot of people that I've talked to since announcing have not told family in order to keep the stress off of themselves because yeah. all the feedback from family is really stressful. The way that the feedback online felt stressful to me. And I think that if telling somebody is going to cause you a bunch of stress like that, I think it's a perfectly okay decision. That's to, exactly what you are trying yeah. not to tell them about. Yeah, I think that's great to choose. And maybe you tell share. them a week or two before or whatever whatever feels right. Maybe you don't tell them till after. Yeah. But you, that, that's really what you're making the decision for. It's not to, it's, it's to make your experience easier. Right. Not to prioritize other people in a weird scale. Correct. Uh, I wanted to note before we wrap up the episode that next week's episode is going to be our birth story and our adjustment to postpartum and being home with a newborn and a toddler and so that voicemail box is open there is a link in the show notes down below so if you want to call and leave a voicemail because you have a specific question or if you want to email us there's also yeah. that down yeah, below yeah actually we got a couple couple email submissions that I would love to get to yeah and a lot of those email submissions have been really good in my opinion mm-hmm. um, podcast episode topics yeah and so Matt and I are going to work on kind of structuring some upcoming episodes around those if you ever have any kind of suggestions what we want this podcast to be is an open flow conversation with all of you that really creates value and happiness in your life whether you come to listen to feel uplifted or to hear about our lives or to just vibe <laughs> Watch two people word vomit for an hour. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, As always, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. Rate, Rate, review. review. And 
follow Matt on Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> and uh, I don't have anything. I'm I'm in my little newborn bliss. I love this phase. You really do. You love the potato phase. I'm tired, but I love my little loaf of bread. I see. I like our other kid and her twenty month old craziness. Yeah, where she's super interactive and super opinionated and. He kind likes of a our pain loaf in the of bread sometimes. too. I, lo- I love our loaf of bread. Yeah. There's not a lot for me to interact with loaf of bread wise. I'm yeah. like, cool, you keep doing you. I'll keep doing me. <laughs> I love you very much. And I hope to find out who you are as a person. Yeah. And then my other one's like, I'm a person and I'm going to make it your problem. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. I can work with that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. Yeah. All right. We love you guys and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.